So tonight we're going to be jumping into episode 7 of Isle of Dread. When last we left our intrepid adventurers, they had traveled to Port Nianzaru um, from their previous adventures. And they had a bunch of treasure they wanted to kind of sell and do some different things. And follow a lead on where to find this mysterious island that they've been kind of questing after for several weeks. Um, once they got to the port, um, they did some investigating, um, and they knew they had a lead to talk to someone named Vorix, which they did do. They went and found this individual Vorix and come to find out that Vorix is actually a dragon, a copper dragon. Um, they did manage to have audience with this dragon who didn't live technically in Port Nianzaru, but they were somehow transported to his lair uh, when they found Vorix Emporium, which was a bookstore. And in the back, the kobolds working there um, set up kind of a, a chance for them to kind of meet this, this dragon. And he was very interested in hearing your tale and also seeing some of the items that you had brought. Through having dinner with him, you learned more about this island. He knew a little bit. Seems like he had traveled there in his youth. Um, so he told you a little bit about the lore and some few tidbits of things he knew about the island. But he also told you the big, the big trick is that the island is actually not in Faerun. It's in a world called Mastara. And he told you of a way to use a portal to go from one to the other. And it seems to be like it's a static portal that you can go back and forth. The two worlds are linked together somehow. Um, so he told you about this whirlpool near Cholt that you could actually sail into, and that whirlpool would actually dump you out in Mastara, apparently. Um, he also um, traded um, a, a magic ring that um, Glendon had, as well as the bubble or crystal ball that Finn had acquired in a previous adventure. He traded those two things he found quite interesting for a boat that he had recently acquired, and the group was able to upgrade to a better boat. They went from a skiff to a galleon, and now they also picked up more crew members last week. We've had Felagar the Minotaur. Uh, we also picked up Barnabas, the fortune-telling tortle, the uh, priest of Savras. And then uh, Vorix also threw in uh, some kobold crew members, um, mainly Korik or Captain Korik, a legendary kobold um, who is said to have ancestry back to the dragons. And he also brought uh, some kobolds of his own. Getting back to the boat, if you're counting, we now have Korik, the kobold, his three cohorts, Hox, Molo, and Varn. And we also have Nebu, the first crew member we picked up. So now we have a total of five kobolds, one minotaur, a turtle, and the party. So we have quite the crew for our sailing ship. And, and a partridge in a pear tree. And a partridge in a pear tree. So the crew is growing. Um, and as we're discussing that, why don't we just go ahead and showcase, um, we spent some time off game talking about our ship and who is going to be where, uh, and what everything's going to be doing. We'll kind of jump into that later as it comes up. And we also wanted to go ahead and introduce the, the crew of the boat, which we have since named the Kraken's Demise. Um, so here we have Feligar, Barnabas, Korik, and the assortment of kobolds. Um, not pictured as Nebu. I forgot to put Nebu in the picture. He's, he's one of these kobolds over here. All right, so that is kind of a catch-up of where we are. At this point, y'all have returned to the boat. So we're back. Actually, we'll take you all the way back to Port Nianzaru. All right, so now we're back in Port Nianzaru. Y'all have gotten back to your boat. You've, you've been collecting all the supplies that was part of the deal that y'all made with Vorix. Remember, the other part, too, was that he told you that if you travel, whatever stories you hear, you should go back and talk to him first. He wants to hear all the lore, your story. He's very interested in, in heroic tales. He's also interested in any uh, books or anything like that. You could basically give him first crack of anything interesting that you find on your return. Um, and from that, the group had been discussing what their steps are. So they've done a little bit of shopping. They've picked up a couple of items here and there um, using some of the money that they had acquired in previous adventures. And I think that's a pretty good wrap up uh, or catch up. So now we're going to move and say tonight, before we sail off tomorrow morning or midday, what is it that the group would like to do? So we'll talk to first to Finn. So Finn, you, you had told me of a plan that you had hatched before y'all left town. Yes, uh, I'm going to, um, I think, I, I don't know if we did it at the time, but I don't know if we talked to the guards about where Vula was staying or if we just try to talk to a town guard 
uh, I think I had talked to the guard about being at the sea, the sea harpy, mm-hmm. and I was going to go by there first and buy him a drink. And I was also going to see if, since he was guarding Volo, if he happened to know where he was dining for the evening. Okay. Um, so the Sea Harpy is kind of the, uh, the the tavern right off the docks. It's also not that far from the autograph signing place you went to. Um, you definitely can go that. Now, who all do you want to take with you on your, your quest to go speak to Volo? Anybody that's up for it. How, does the crew want to go as well? You can take the whole okay. crew. McGrundon. Glendon, do y'all want to jump in on this too or hang back? Um, we're yeah, leaving go. We're leaving tomorrow, right? Right. Now, instead, McGrundon's going to be running around in a huff on the boat, uh, going through his checklists and making sure we have everything we need. Sounds good. He's got to get. Pre- he doesn't really even understand why Finn is going off on this. They're going to see this guy that they already saw right. t- today, so he doesn't understand why they're trying to get, get a drink with him too now. Glendon, will you be going? find him all that impressive. Yeah, I'll, I'll go with uh, Finn. Okay, so Glendon and Finn are going to go. As y'all are getting ready to go, uh, you look over and Nabu uh, is kind of scuttling over to you and goes, um, I've been on the boat since most of the time we've been here. Do you mind if I go with you? Not at all, friend. Okay. Tag along. All right, so Nabu the Cobalt, he, he hops down and uh, decides to join you. Um, he's scuttling about, um, staying close to you. Now, Korik is getting the other kobolds into uh, shape and getting the boats ready. He's kind of working closely with McGrundon. You also have Feligar, who's the bosun, who's kind of telling everybody what to do as well. And Barnabas is... Um, what is Barnabas doing? What do y'all want Barnabas, the fortune-telling tortle, to be doing? Uh, I think he needs to be uh, working on the chapel area. Okay. For Danny, like getting it all set up, sanctified and whatnot. Tell you what, he will work on um, getting uh, different things, uh, borrowing some things from the Temple of Savras to bring with him. So he'll be getting supplies as well to go on. And this, I'm assuming this that Nabu has been working on like mats and stuff for the other area the mon- the monastery-ish type thing y'all just got there it's been a day um nah. he's he's been kind of looking over the boat but he wants to go with you guys he's he's he okay. wants to see the town all right so the three of you um head to the sea harpy um it is nighttime uh we'll move the set piece to there all right the sea harpy all right, you go in, as soon as you open, the, you can hear the the sounds of the tavern from down the street, the lights flickering as you're walking through the tavern, the, as you're walking through the town, the, the sun has gone down, uh, torches and, and different braziers are, are lit throughout the town. As you walk into the tavern, it's loud, it's boisterous, you know, there's a lot of uh, talk going on, a lot of games being played. Um, sailors come in here and, and, and not just drink in merriment, but also share stories there's a lot of people just like talking back and forth about you know um rumors and things they've heard coming from the seas coming from the jungle some adventurers even come here before they head out into the jungle to kind of see if they can garner any tidbits of information so that just kind of lets you know there's a little bit of music playing in the background there seems to be a minstrel in the back um strumming on a lute but it's kind of you can barely hear it because there's like this dull roar of people talking in the tavern uh so finn what would you like to do I'm going to look for the guard that I'd originally seen earlier guarding below. Right. Um, you scout around and you do see uh, a handful of gu- uh, guards over at the, the bar itself. Uh, seem to be ordering drinks. Um, they don't have their weapons or anything like that, but you can see they're still wearing the same clothes they were before. You know, the the, 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 the yellow tunic that kind of like pulls across, kind of like the Roman guard style. Yeah. And uh, you see them looking about and, and, and ordering drinks. Um, they seem to be drinking some type of mead. Um, it's not ale. It comes in a smaller, like, glass. And they seem to be drinking that. I'm going to slap some money down on the counter and say, that round's on me. Oh, well, thank you. Uh, I remember you, odd fellow, talking to that Volo chap, weren't you? Uh, yeah, you wouldn't happen to know where he's dining for the evening, would you? Oh, just follow the sounds of the ladies in the corner. You'll run into them, I'm sure. Thanks, my friend. And I'll see if I'll buy my own drink and kind of wonder that way. Okay. Me and Glendon. Glendon, are you just following, following? the sound of the giggling ladies? 
Glendon? Yeah. He's falling about? Okay. Yeah. So Glendon's falling behind you, and you're like kind of like in between your legs and like almost like under your cloak is this little kobold staying extremely close to you um, so he doesn't get stepped on. Um, there's all sorts of people in the tavern. It's not just humans. It's, uh, you see a bunch of, um, like, like very pale skinned dwarves, like albino dwarves are here as well. Um, and you also see, um, a handful of just other, you see a tiefling, you know what that is in the corner. You also see, um, several of these cat people, these tabaxi that look like, um, you know, humanoid cats. They, they look like almost like, uh, like cheetah print. Um, mm -hmm. you see a couple of them in the corner as well. Just very odd, just di a different feel than you would have gotten in Baldur's Gate. You see a couple of things. Yeah, it's just a big mix. It's, it's a big mix. Before I get over there too, I, I'm thinking about it. I'm going to buy a round of something expensive and kind of extravagant from the bartender. Oh, they do I have. Buy one, buy one. They do have a bottle of Elvish wine that you can buy for one gold piece. Okay, I'm going to get that. Okay, so you pick up a, a bottle of wine. Fancy. Some fancy some glasses. Wine. In a couple of glasses, all right, and you make your way over, uh, and you you come to a table where you see the human dwarf. And sorry, he's not a dwarf. Human, human dwarf can't be both human and a dwarf. You see a human, um, you, uh, Volo. He you saw him be. before with the big puffy shirt with the the mm. hat that kind of like rolls over the big bushy beard. And uh, there are three ladies sitting at the table, and he's uh, telling them of them some tale about how he. Uh, traveled and 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 he he's telling some story is he can't tell if he was there if he heard the story, but it has something to do with um, uh, like a council of giants and he's talking about how you know the giants were talking back and forth and how they were trying to save this area from an invasion of giants and they just seem to be very enthralled with the story. Um, so you kind of hear tidbits as he's telling it as you walk up. He looks over and goes, "Well, hello, friend." Um, do you care to join us? I'm going to kind of catch his eye to the side there and wink and say, oh, yeah, Hi, hello, my friend. I brought the uh, wine that you ordered for the ladies here. And he looks at you and kind of he winks at you. He goes, good man. He knows how yeah, to come up to a party. Down. Perfect. Yeah. And he looks up and he goes, that is a very big friend of yours, Furbog, correct? Yes, Thanks. and... Uh, I don't want to tie up too much of your time, but I, I wanted to run something past you because you're a very experienced man. And uh, I wanted to kind of brainstorm with you real quick. We'll take five, ten minutes. Sure, sure. Tell you what, ladies. Give the ladies just enough time to dip into that drink. Tell you what, ladies, uh, why don't you pour a glass, give us a moment while we talk business, uh, and I'll be right with you. Yes, yes. Have you heard any stories, anything you'd like to share with me? Well, um, I'll get back to that in a second. But the first thing I wanted to discuss with you is the the theory behind hunting a kraken. Ah, hunting a kraken. You know, I've traveled up and down the Sword Coast, and I have heard uh, whalers speak of uh, these, these leviathans. Not necessarily a kraken or giant squid. Now, I did hear of a chap who actually said he killed one of these giant squids uh, using the harpoon they craned the thing up on the boat. Not sure if it's true or not, but it could have been. Well, one of the things I've been thinking about is the use of bladders tied together in a net filled with air so that you could harpoon the leviathan and it couldn't submerge because the buoyancy of the bladders would keep it from going under. Nabu and I are going to go throw some darts. <laughs> All right. All right, y'all leave to... It's not that far. Like, you just basically go to the corner. You actually see some other pirates. It's not darts. They're actually got these little throwing knives they're throwing back and forth. So you go to kind of take turns throwing daggers, uh, these little throwing knives. And Nabu is following you, but he's also kind of like halfway between you and... And he's still listening in on... He's very interested in whatever it is Finn is talking about. Tell and I'm going to kind of draw it out, to too. Hmm? Yes. You were saying? I'll, I'll tell him he can I'll stay. Say, oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, so sir. I'm just kind of drawing it out. Like, the idea of like a harpoon with a line connected with a net that's filled with bladders to keep it from submerging because the whole problem of hunting a leviathan or a kraken is that at any point it can just be like peace i'm out and you 
you're not fighting it anymore. How good is this diagram he's drawing? All right, so uh, you, you draw this out. He's kind of looking at it. He goes, I'm going to stop you there. I believe the theory that you're talking about is correct. I think it could work. I am not the one to design this. You need to find yourself a gnome. Gnomes are amazing at making this little thing like this. I once met Boondiggle. That was his name. There were these Boondiggles just south of uh, Muran. They would be able to help you make something like this. Okay. Just one other thing. Uh, do you know anything of a place called Mistara? I have heard of this place. And he kind of gets interesting goes, Ladies, give us some more, more moments. I, I'm very interested. That is a name that does not frequent many taverns. Not many minstrels, bards, or anyone has ever heard of this place. I've only heard of it a couple of times. Mainly from um, an old friend of mine, Elminster. He once told me of this place. We're planning to voyage there tomorrow. Really? Well, that is very interesting. Why? How, this is a good story. Why would you want to go to this place? First, how do you know about this place? And why would you want to go there? Uh, let's just say a patron of ours uh, helped us uh, locate the place. But the reason why we know of it is uh, one of my companions has been having a vision of a place there and our patron has informed us that it is, in fact, in Mistara. So you feel like you're beckoned to go there, do you? Hm. Uh, yeah, well, not me, but him, but yes. It's interesting you say that. Uh, several months ago, I ran into another individual here in Cholt, actually, who was uh, planning a similar voyage. I'd never heard from him before. Um, I'm going to drop the guy's name from the Barbosa. From the case. Barbosa? Yeah. Yes, that was him. That was him. He, uh... He, yeah, he, he had heard it from a friend who had heard it from a friend and was out thinking he was going to get some type of treasure. And um, I don't know if he ever made it or if he ever came back, but uh, I, I warned him about it. He didn't seem to have all the information. Uh, we have a better layout of the denizens there. We know of you do? three different dragons. Ooh, what type of dragons? Red, green, and black. I know a lot about those types of dragons. You gotta be careful on that island. Uh, any glaring weaknesses in their facades? The issue with these dragons, or all dragons in that matter, is that no matter how you choose to fight them, it is a losing proposition. If you fight them out in the open field, you have to get them onto the ground, which can be very difficult. They'll just stay above you and just rain death on you. If you choose to do the thing that most people think they're wise and actually go into its lair to hunt it, you are now fighting on its home turf. It will be very difficult. Each dragon makes its own lair in a sense that is advantageous for him in his environment. The red dragon, you per se. I once heard of a, a party that went to hunt a, a younger red dragon, and only one of them survived. Um, they spoke of a dragon who leapt out of the lava to attack them. Yes. How do you fight that? Yeah, good question. Well, I, I appreciate your uh, your uh, help here, and a uh, few more questions. Have you ever heard of Rakasta? Rakasta. Rakasta. Cat people. Yes, but they're called something else. Yes, um, the name. I do. They are cat people. Noble, um, very tribal in nature, if I recall, but they're called something else. I forget, but yes, yes, they, yes, I believe they're on that island as well. I've also heard that the people there are cannibalistic in nature. Mm. So, I don't know if I would trust humans there, but I've heard that they eat anything and everyone. Thank you very much for your time. What other information do you have? Like, how do you know to get there? Um, I have a basic layout of the what, location. Do you of have the... a map? 
In a sense. I would very much like to see a map. Well, I don't know if I have it with I don't think I have it with me, but I could sketch out what I drew before. Okay. And I'll say, do you have... I'm going to ask him if he has one of his books with him. I do. And I'll take the book, open the back, and sketch from memory the okay. closest so, thing I could to the... All right, so you sketch out from memory. We'll say that your art skills are better than uh, your, your actual art skills. <laughs> thank, thank God. <laughs> all right. Um, this is the map that you found with Barbosa. This was the map that he, in his letter, said that he had drawn <laughs> that basically just shows the uh, they sailed what? around the island, and he got just a basic topography of around but nothing on the inside of the island now you know talking to vorix that you're looking for something called the high plateau um towards the middle of the island or something now as you're looking at that vola looks down and he laughs he goes that map is terrible that that's <laughs> not going to do you any good at all I'm not drawing the map of the island I'm drawing the map you of the star chart to get to the island well what we're going to say is you're drawing the map so okay sorry so he's looking over and he's like that map is terrible tell you what i'll show you a map that i have if you care but you said you haven't been here you just have a map i haven't been there that doesn't say i don't have a map good point so i will show you this but only now and he kind of looks around just the two of us so he goes and he pulls out this map. Oh. Now this is a map that I got from my old friend Elminster. I'm going to ask him if he has an extra piece of parchment and kind of basically trying to like look at it. and. He, sure, sure. He, he rips it out. He, uh, he hands it to you um, as you, I guess you're trying to copy down as much as you can. Yeah. Um, now, when you look over this map, there are some notes on it, um, and there's some sketch drawing. Now, it's still not a hundred percent like to scale or anything like that, but it does give you idea of where certain things might be. Mm-hmm. And in the middle of the map, it says "rumor of and fear abound." This area and this area here in the center. If that that has to be the high plateau, okay. it's the only thing. It's the blank area, so that's obviously where you're trying to get to. I, I take notice of the. Is that supposed to be a human, or is that supposed to be a triton down in the bottom right hand corner? Uh, looks like a triton. Let me look. Huh. No, that's a human. Okay. That is a human. And there's some kind of walls near far shore going north. He points Two down volcanoes. at the bottom. Down at the bottom, he says, yeah, you see that area there? Far shore, that, that, I would stay away from the humans there. The, I've heard that they are all cannibals. What would you, where would you recommend to make landfall? Maybe in the inlet between, uh, north of the two volcanoes there? Uh, p- can you ping the map? Hmm. It's possible. And I, I mean, I'm looking at everything else, and maybe if you oh. if you look closely, there's a line here. Is that a river? Yeah, and it looks like it. That I, I, I'll tell him that the the mesa there is where we are trying to get to. That's possible. That's a possible landing. You could come up here next to this giant dinosaur fellow, <laughs> and go through. I guess this looks like jungle. You could come here and try to climb through the mountains. While he's doing that, I'm going to take the parchment and sketch out the star chart and basically try to draw a map to the portal for him. Okay. Because that is very interesting. Very interesting. Well, I appreciate your bottle of wine. I have three ladies here that need my close attention. And he, he kind of gives you a second to finish sketching this as much as he can. And he says, so with that... Um, until I'll, we meet again. Until we meet again. Yes, good good day, sir. 
And uh, as you turn and look, you see that Nabu has like been sitting on the floor right next to you the whole time, just quietly listening. Um, Glendon, you come back from throwing your daggers, um, and you're okay at it. But there's there's a couple of guys in here that are just like bullseye every time. These guys are great. They were more interested in like they've never seen a furbolg before in a tavern, so they didn't know. They were your conversation just for sake of brevity was like what are you and then while you were there um an albino dwarf came up to you and he looks up he goes i've seen your kind deep in the jungles of cholt they live i've seen your kind oh yeah i've never met too many of my kind that's very interesting uh your kind don't normally like to be out in civilization you prefer the woods. You protect the woods, I believe. What brought you here? Right. I'm just traveling from one wood to another. Hmm. Well, it's good to finally speak to you. Normally when I see your kind, it's only for a moment and they disappear like they don't even exist. I have only seen your footprints hidden into the woods, but I knew you existed. You've got family here. I don't know. Well, good day to you, sir. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Big gulps, huh? He said good day. Yeah. All right. So <laughs> with that, are we are we done with the? T- is there anything else you want to do in the tavern? I'm good. good. Okay. All right. So now, one more thing that you do pick up as y'all are in the tavern. Um, there's a lot of talk from a lot of the sailors, and you pick this up all over the place that the seas have been angry. And a lot of the boats that are wrecked, not just from Aramog, the giant turtle outside that's like holding up everybody. He's got his embargo. But even ships coming in have talked about unnaturally rough storms. The seas are extremely choppy. It's been treacherous to travel, particularly back and forth up to Moran and up to Waterdeep, up the Sword Coast. Um, And it's just everyone. And it's been like this for the last week or so. And what's interesting is that y'all didn't have this issue coming in. Y'all had smooth sailing all the way down. But everyone else here, I don't know if it's just picked up lately, everyone else here is talking about how horrible um, the seas have been. Now, the fishermen are actually quite happy about it because as the seas are getting choppy, they're actually getting more catches closer to the shore. Um, Something to do with the tide, the pull, but they're, they're catching more closer in than they normally would so the fishermen are like yeah you're going to stay closer but the people are actually like the merchants that are sailing out they're actually having a lot of issues um with traveling the seas so that's kind of the tidbits of information like is there anything else we want to do y'all get a good night's rest get back to the boat um mcgrundon is missing he's uh already turned in for the night all of the kobolds are drinking on the deck um you walk up you hear man huh Captain's work is hard work. Oh, it's hard work. McGrunnin's already turned in. The kobolds are all sitting well, up you're talking. Out cavorting all night and arousing. Right. Now, um, one thing that did happen while they were away, um, McGrundin, we'll, we're going to back up for a second. Before you turn in for the night, um, you've been working with Coric, <clears throat> Hawks, Molo, and Varn. That's the four kobolds that kind of came together. And. Um, Apparently, you're taught. You can hear him whispering draconian that like uh, word has got out that Corrick's about to go on another grand adventure, and with that, over the course of the next couple of hours, three more kobolds make it onto the boat and have now joined the crew. Um, they were just excited to hear that they could be a part of of going on this journey, and now they seem to either be cousins or something. They're somehow related to these other, but now we have on a H N we have Godo and Kaba. each, each. Okay. Each one, as they board the ship, they kind of get yelled at and, and treated fairly poorly as they come on as if they're not part of the crew, but they, they get, we, we bring them on anyway. We put them to, to the grunt work, but we're kind of running out of grunt work because you know, it's the, by the time we get to that third kobold, he's, he's scrubbing decks that have already been scrubbed three times. It's and everyone, fine. all the other kobolds are kind of laughing about it because well, this well, is work that's already been well, done. Well, Kaba just, says, I, I, being I, hazed. I, but I, I understand, but I can cook. Do you need a cook? Well, I think, but, yeah. How do you spell that last one's name? Kaba. C-A-B-B-A. 
on Godo and Kaba. Kaba says, Please, sir, I'd like to be with Korik. I can cook. All right. Uh, I've heard a lot of kobolds claim that they can cook. Get down in there and, and, and let's see what you can do. Oh, see, see, thank you. All right, so um, he, he kind of scuttles down below deck. So now, um, in case we're counting, we now have eight kobolds on the, the crew, um, a minotaur, and a turtle. Are these cousins um, also orange? Um, yes, the only kobold... So Nebu is green, the others are orange, and Korik is, is, is blue. Is blue, right. The orange will be the yeah. red shirt instance of the, of the group. Okay. All right, so with that... You wake up the next morning. Uh, everyone has has gotten a good. It's, y'all are up before the sunrise. Um, the kobolds um, have been up all night. Apparently, they're nocturnal and they've just been up getting everything ready. You get up and the 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 oh, ship the is amazing. You've got amazing breakfast prepared. Um, they went and got um, some giant eggs from the market. They look like, I mean, the the size of these eggs they they've pulled out. They're some type of dinosaur eggs. And they're having this grand feast before um, the tide hits because you've got to hit it just right. Um, and they're, they're just kind of getting everything ready. And they're they're laughing and kind of snickering and having a good time. And everyone's just excited to be uh, heading out uh, in the morning. So is there anything the captain would like to say or do um, before we venture off? Before we shove off, I want to swim out into the bay a little bit and make and like just swim out to like where we would exit the harbor and see if I see a turtle anywhere around there. Because I can swim pretty fast. I'll meet them back up on the boat as they're sailing out. Okay, so you go scout out. While he's scouting, McGrundon. No, he's just, he's fairly curt with him. He, gather, he gathers all the cold balls together. And he says, uh, I want to see hard work out of a lot of you. No screwing around on my boat. That's how people get, get killed. And the first sign of trouble, you're going right over the side. I got that. And as soon as you say they're going right over the side, they all go, yeah! <laughs> They're like they're excited because they're they're kind of like used to being yelled at, um, yeah. So they're they're quite they're quite happy with this. And uh, you know, Cork is sitting beside you, uh, standing beside you with it with his with his long like long pipe that he's smoking. And um, and then also that's on one side of you. I say on your left, on your right side is Felagar, and he's just got his arms crossed behind you. And uh, and all the kobolds are like. You know, we're not going to mess with you guys. They're they're good. So the general. Where's Nabu at? What's he What's he doing? Um, that is a good question. Nabu is not on the deck. He's in. He's working on the monastery. Okay. All right. So he's he's below deck. Okay. Uh, once I find out that he's working on the monastery, good, good. Okay. Keep him hard at work. Um, All right. Let's let's ship off. Um. Now before we ship off, Barnabas comes with us. Before we go, is there anything you'd like for me to do? Stay out of my way. Wow, I can do that. <laughs> no, Bonabus, you're you're fine. Don't don't worry. You just relax. Do do your thing. I, I see you've been just wandering around the boat and and working on the monastery, uh, working on the chapel. You just take your time. Just relax, my total friend. Relax. All right, we'll do. I'm gonna go. Up. I'm gonna go up to him and say now now. Barnabas, oh, you could do for us. I'm gonna yeah. slap him on the shoulder and give him guidance and say, "Give us one a good prayer before we go off." I oh, want to hear a good prayer. That's a that's a mighty fun idea. Boat. We need to christen the boat and you know bless the voyage. Oh, let me let me do a, a, a quick prayer. Um, all right, hang on. <laughs> do you have one ready? <laughs> oh, let's see. All right, so that's gonna be an eleven. 15 plus his 17. That's pretty good. It's a pretty good prayer. Uh, as he gets up, he goes, um, all my adventuring friends, we've come together, gathered on some blessed adventure that Savras has, has called us to together to go on some, I don't know what we're doing, but Savras is going to bless this trip, and we have a mighty fine crew, we have a mighty fine captain, and I just pray for, for smooth sailing to the land of the unknown, and may Savras will be done, whatever it is. And and all the kobolds are looking around like, what is this? <laughs> and they they just kind of like pause with this awkward stare at the turtle, and they go about and they go about the work. The gospel one of them, huh? Kind of give him a push, right? right. Kind of give the, the kobold and a push, and, and they go like this. Felagar reaches over to Yuma Grun and goes, 
What on earth are we bringing this thing for? Or do we plan to Listen, eat him uh, later? <laughs> you know, that's that's really your call. I'm going to keep my eye on I'm not on really sure one. myself. I think Glendon's bringing him along for, for the laughs so far. I don't understand, but you're the captain. Um... And uh, and with that, um, he does he does the, his prayer, and um, he looks over and he he uh, this is uh, Barnabas. He pulls out his turtle shell shield and he throws uh, his stuff down. He kind of rolling the bones around. He goes goes. Well, it looks like we're gonna have some pretty smooth sailing out now. It's very interesting. My reading is only half. It's only half. What, what, I, maybe it's true where we're gonna travel because I don't see a fortune after that. From there on out, we make our own fortune. Well, you're the captain. All right, so... <laughs> you're the captain. You're the captain. All right, so, Finn, you have swam out. Um, the water is choppy, um, and as you're, you're swimming out, um, there is... One of the things that you can tell, there is a, a whole lot of sharks in the water. Um, small, some larger... Um, you see a lot of fish evading as out of the harbor. There's a lot of shark in this harbor. Hmm. Do I do I know why a situation like that would would be? I mean, sharks are sometimes just territorial. Might be good eating here. I don't know. Remember what we said earlier with the fishermen? All the fish were kind of moving in. It's true. It's true. Yeah. I don't see any sign of. You don't see any sign the of big armag. turtle. No. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna assume we're gonna keep a rope ladder over the side of the boat so I can go in and out whenever I need. Okay. All right. So you get back to the boat. You get back to the boat right as they're shoving off. Um, now, one thing about the boat as well is there are there are two small rowboats on the side of the boat. Y'all do have you know two of those in case you ever need it. Um, just to make sure we went over that. Didn't say anything about that. So now y'all are sailing out. This is a big three sail galleon. Um, as you make your way out of the harbor. Um, you hear uh, Felagar barking orders back and forth. The kobolds are, are scurrying up and down the, the, the ropes and everything, getting all the sails in position. And um, amazingly, uh, between Barnabas um, doing a whole lot of nothing, it looks like, but the rest of the crew is getting everything together. And y'all make out like an actual legit crew out of the harbor, um, mainly because Korik and Felagar are barking orders so quickly. Korik is very quiet. And he'll just kind of say what needs to happen, uh, and then the bosun makes it happen. So it, basically, it goes from McGrundon to Corrick, and then Feligar makes it happen. Um, so basically, the day-to-day, -day, like getting out of the harbor, that's a Corrick job. Major decisions about what's going to happen, McGrundon is going to be the one that comes in and says what needs to happen. So um, that's kind of the chain of command as we go. So y'all sail out of the harbor and begin moving west out of Cholt. So let's go to another map all right so basically we'll we'll obey this... the chain of command all right so basically you're going to come out this way the bay of cholt and you're going to have to kind of kind of cut cross this way and you're going to go basically sail south of the mist cliff and it's supposed to be somewhere over here supposedly that's the rumor so you've got a good day of sailing basically and as you're going out throughout the day um we have a full day y'all decide what y'all want to do it is extremely smooth sailing um the painting that y'all saw where you would have smooth sailing is correct um there's almost like maybe one cloud in the sky it's a beautiful perfect day the wind is is moving perfectly the water everything about the sailing is it's flawless as you're leaving cholt now um what do y'all is there anything y'all want to be doing during this day we'll start with we'll start top to bottom glendon is there anything that you want to do during this day of open sailing i'm gonna um i'm gonna uh get with some of the other crew and just try to um learn as much learn something about the ship that way i can feel semi-useful you know what i mean like kind of try to pick up a a trade on a ship because I know next to nothing about them. Okay. Um, you get, throughout the day, um, you get with Varn. Um, he's one of the smaller <laughs> kobolds. 
And uh, he's sitting here teaching you knots. He's teaching you rope use. Teaching you okay. how to tie knots. That's how you spend your day. Um, has, has he become skilled okay. at using rope? Um, it will come up later. If it does, we'll remember his day of, of learning a knot or two. Um, I'm, so, I'm, I'm going to see them using the rope, and I want to come over and say, Hey, can you tie a loop, a good loop that won't come loose on the end of this rope? Uh, Varn does it easily. Varn okay. seems like he's then, spent a lot of time on a boat. Then I'm going to take that 35-foot rope, and I'm going to tie it. And I say, can you tie this other end to the edge of the boat where it won't come loose? Yes. Yes, yes. And then I'm going to take the rope, and I'm going to jump in the water. Okay. All right. You're in the water. So are you being dragged by the boat at this point? I've got my foot in the loop, and I'm just hanging out underwater, checking it out, seeing what I see from below. Okay. Because I can do that. Uh, yes, you can. <laughs> um, all right, so you're kind of scouting out, kind of looking down in the water. Um, you do this off and on, um, and there's something about the water here. There's a lot of stinking sharks in this water. You see them all over the place. <clears throat> um, larger ones out here, but you see a few here and there. Um and it's just shark-infested waters all around Schult. Hmm. Next time I come back, I'm going to come by McGrendon and say, you don't want to go overboard here. There's more sharks than I've ever seen in my life. True statement. And McGrendon kind of nods and says, thank you for the warning, my <laughs> friend. And when Finn wanders off, I head down there with a rope. I go a little shark hunting. <laughs> That's right. I forgot. Very first game. You, have, you love the taste of shark. <laughs> Actually, you could test Love out it. the ballista. Ooh. That'd be fun, too. Is that a strength thing yeah. or a dex thing? It's a dex thing. It is. I'll give it a shot. I'll go down into the water, take a look for myself, and once I see the sharks, kind of go back up, stay Actually, the ballista. Yeah, I would want to do that, too, because off. I would want to learn how to shoot for okay. bigger things. All right. I'll, I'll show... Win and how it works. How All right, so here's works. what we can do. We will have, if you want to do it this way, we can have a spotter and we can have a shooter. That way the shooter gets advantage on the shot, basically using the help action. So you basically have one person be like, four degrees to the right, four degrees to the right. <laughs> <laughs> well, since I'm since I'm kind of showing Finn how to use it, okay. I'll be I'll act as the spotter okay. and uh, let him let him try out All his right, hand so on the All right, so Finn, give me, y'all do spot a, a, a shark off the starboard bow. You turn the giant ballista to the side. Um, you've got rope to the side of it. And at this point, all of the kobolds who were sailing before have all, like, run up. And they're like, get him, get him. Like, they're all excited. <laughs> this is a big deal. Like, oh, man, we're going to we're gonna hunt something. All right, so with that, make your shot. So it is going to be, you see a shark off your starboard bow. You're going to take a shot it, with the ballista. You're going to roll uh, d20 with advantage. Uh, because, and it, it basically, it's a dex attack for you. So just click my dex, basically. Cor yeah. Because you're not really see. proficient with this weapon, but you I do don't know how chance. to. So I just add three, right? Yeah, yeah. So okay. two two d twenty. Two d twenty. Wow. Uh, All right, so you'll take the, the eight, eighteen. Yep. <laughs> so and it's a twenty one. Right. So you hit the shark. Um, you would have missed, but McGrundon giving you the at the last minute, he kind of pushes it to the left just a hair. Um, because he reminds you that when you're shooting you've done this before, McGrundon. When you're shooting into the water, you have to shoot below where you think it is, uh, because of refraction in the water. So you actually have to shoot a little bit lower than you think. So with that adjustment, you actually skewer the side of this this giant shark. Um, roll three D ten damage. Not bad. Ho! Oh, okay, that's a good stick. All right, with that, you have stuck the shark. At that point, all the kobolds run up and all in unison, they start trying to pull the sh the the uh, the shark up. You've got like five kobolds pulling. Can on I this use rope. my? Yes. I use my plus one net. <laughs> all right, as yes. they're, they're pulling it up, it's fighting. Um, give me uh, give me a net attack. Give me a dex dex throw. Okay, you Ooh, miss, but great. you pull the you pull the net back up. They're they're trying to lose it. At this point, Feligar walks up, step aside, 
and all the kobolds move and he just goes and starts like pulling this giant shark up to the side they y'all yes. landed this giant tiger shark and they pull up and immediately you turn around and look every kobold there has pulled out a knife and they start just like going at this shark within a few moments they have skinned this entire thing seeing these five kobolds work in unison is you can't look away from it because it's amazing how well they skin this thing, but it's also terrifying how fast they were able to just gut and meet this thing. It's interesting the tactics that they use as 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 a pack. As a pack. As their pack. <laughs> I see what you did there. All right. Uh, yeah, so they y'all have killed the the tiger shark, y'all have caught it and skinned it, and they uh, they take all the meat down to Cabo. Who uh, Kaba, who is now um, preparing um, our dinner tonight? Fresh tiger shark. I'm gonna I'm gonna slice the top dorsal fin off and ask for some soup. Oh, perfect. Okay. Uh, all right. So that's that's what you did. All right. So Glendon, you worked on that on ropes. Y'all have kind of gotten used to using the ballista, and y'all have called a shark. That kind of gets us the day. That's what y'all did for the day. Yeah. Um, Barnabas spent his day, um, down below, um, working on, um, he's actually been helping Nebu with the monastery. That's what he spent his day doing. Um, he's very interested in having a place to like quiet away from everybody, you know? Um, now about halfway through the day, he walks up and, uh, he says, um, Finn, is there anything you'd like me to talk to Savras about while we're finishing up today? Um, yes. Um, and I'm going to show him the map that we sketched together oh. from from Volo. Okay. And I'm going to say, so let's go. To I wonder map. what Savras's uh, guidance would be on where to make landfall. Okay. That's it says well. I, I can't ask him a question like that. More of a yes or no question. This is more than just rolling the bones. This would actually be augury. Where would you like me to ask? Yes or no? Wheel or woe? There. Right here. Well, that I can do. He now goes down to the monastery to perform a ritual. Okay. As he's going to cast Augury. I say if he says whoa, we go there anyway. Because <laughs> Joey Lawrence is there. <laughs> whoa. Okay. Um, are you going to go with him while he does this or just let him do his thing? Yeah, I'll go with him, light some incense, check out what they've been doing down there. All right, so you go down there. Uh, Nabu has gotten it all cleaned out, basically. Um, it's open. Um, there is, he somehow managed to find a rug and there's like a giant rug down there. Um, which is, it's good for your, you know, practicing your, your forms and things like that. But it's kind of just an open space at this point. The masts go all the way down, don't they? Don't they go all the way down? Yes. Okay. Where the mast has gone down into that room, we're going to put three arm. We're going to drill holes in the mast and put the three arms and make the uh, Jackie Chan practice wooden doll out of it. Okay. Drilling holes in my mast, bro. Right here. Okay, I got you. Yeah. So you can do the do 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 do. All right, all right, all right. All right. All right so y'all are working on that. Um, um, there is uh, there's really not any tables or anything in here. So you see Barnabas just go and he just flops down. He looks at your map. He pulls out his shell. He flips it back over so where it's like the, 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 the round side up. And uh, he goes and he grabs a couple of candles and he kind of like wedges the candles into the back of the shell itself and lights them. And he begins to like do this chant, this prayer to Savras. Um, as he talks about that, he, he brings up this map. And he's like, Savras. And he's talking like, you know, give us, give us a direction, a sense of where we should be. And he's like, he goes, would you would you give us a favor? We have favor to go to this spot, and he, he's pointing to that particular spot on the map. Uh, and um, as he points out, you, you you see him sit there for a second, and his eyes open up, and you see that his eyes have kind of rolled in the back of his head. So the only thing you're seeing is the back part of his black eyes, because they're like amphibian eyes, kind of rolling back. And he looks and goes, "Oh, I see." 
I see marsh and a swamp. I see, I see, whoa, but wait. Beyond that is a river. And that river does arc between mountains. And that is the, I say now, I say. That is the way to go. <laughs> it is a path. And he kind of, and he kind of sees back and goes, um, Master, Master Finn, this is, it will be a hard fought trail, but that will lead you where you want to go. Good man. Thanks, Savers, for his guidance. It is a swamp, and I saw us on a little boat. All right. That's what we needed, and I'm going to head up to my Grundon. Okay. With the map. All right. So, we're back at the top of the boat. Um... Sounds as good a place as any to to set sail. All right. So, in the middle of the night, y'all start getting closer to this spot that this whirlpool is. And you're you're sailing, and you don't... It doesn't look like anything. You were expecting something massive, but you look up in the distance, and you see where the water kind of dips. And it seems small. Like, you'd almost miss it, but it's... It's like basically you have to sail between these two rocks, and there's just this. I mean, it's very small. Like you're expecting this massive whirlpool, but it's it's you're narrowly going to be able to get this through there. So with that, we're going to need a sailing check. So I'm going to need an intelligence sailing check from McGrundon to try to sail the boat into the whirlpool. Is there anything y'all want to do before y'all try to do this, Glendon? I'll say, would you like would you like some guidance? I'd love some. I'll take I'll over right help I can on this faithful journey. All you got to do is say a little prayer to my leaky. Uh, it's unfortunate. Let's give it a shot. What do I have to do? What do I? What do I have to say, Just Glenda? Pray. Just ask for some guidance from my leaky. My leaky. I ask for your guidance. Is that good enough, Glenda? Is that it? Yes, and because hey, Cork because Cork is with you, you will get advantage on the roll, and you will also get a D four for guidance. Yeah. That was going to be my question. Okay, here we go with advantage. Ooh, we have a mighty. Oh, I thought that was a seven, a four. Oh wait, D four too. A five. <laughs> okay. Plus my intelligence and my proficiency bonus. All right. Uh, we'll bring that up to a mighty f- a nine. A nine. Okay. A nine. So, um, you misjudge it. It was terrible. You misjudge it. Um, the side of the boat banks off of one of the rocks. It, you didn't realize that the rock was as shallow as it was. Like you could see it sticking out, and you thought oh, I can sail there, but it was actually it was more like this. So you kind of scrape the bottom of the boat into the rock itself before you hit the whirlpool. Um, the boat. I yell at the kobolds. Right, it was their fault, of course. Um, you yell at the kobolds, and we're just going to use this map for the sake. All right, you do manage to sail, and as you hit this whirlpool, um, everything stops, and you each of you look around, and everyone else is frozen in time except for you. That goes for everyone. You look around and everyone else looks frozen in this moment. And you look and you see the stars that you saw before are shifting. They're shifting. Like, they're not moving. They're just, they're not like moving fast. They're just changing positions. And within a few seconds, the boat pulls pulls around and you look around and all of your, your setting has completely changed. It's still night. The wind where before was pushing you one way is kind of coming across the other side of the boat. The, the, the sails are kind of tattering in the wrong direction. And you look around and you're in unknown seas. All right, I send one of them down to check the hole, first and foremost. Okay. After um, hitting that rock. All right, so um, Hawks was the first one closest to you. He runs down there and he's like, Leak! You can just hear an echo, leak! And he comes back up, leak, leak! And with that, um, they all go, and Nabu immediately goes and starts using some of the planks that y'all had collected before. He had actually brought them over from the other boat and starts planking the outside or the inside of the boat uh, to just kind of stop well, a leak. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to grab one of them, and I'm going to go 
using that rope that Finn had set up, and I'm going to go plank the outside. Okay. All right. So y'all are so basically the boat is kept. So um, Coric and 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 um, and Feligar are trying to steady the top of the boat, get the sails in the right position. So you've got Cobalt doing it up top. You run down the bottom. Nabu comes running. Um, Barnabas is coming. Um, Nabu's carrying the planks. Barnabas is coming. He's got the bucket of nails and the hammer, and they're kind of like running together. Um, so everyone's kind of running. Now the leak isn't. It's it's minor. It's almost like between two. It's like between two boards there's like a little bit of a, a leak there so it's an easy fix but it is a temporary fix you're gonna have to spend some time you can you can basically nail this now and it will slow sure. it but to actually repair it you're gonna need to sit in a bay for a minute um you know so it's just gonna take some time on that so so we should have somebody bailing water while it's right 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 but you've got enough cobalts so it's okay um with that Y'all spend a few minutes. Y'all get it under control um, to where it's a minor leak at this point. And, like, every few minutes, you, f you basically have a bucket sitting under that catches it. And a cobalt runs it up. And y'all are basically just trading buckets. So it's not like, oh, it's a dire situation. It is something we're going to have to take care of eventually. Okay. So crisis averted for now. Um, and with that, uh, the cobalts are all kind of, like, patting each other on the back. And I was like, yeah, like they overcame some great uh, obstacle. Um, so it's still nighttime and you're in unknown seas. What would you like to do? We haven't we, eaten shark yet. Do we have it? Do we see any landfall? You look around and in the distance, in the far distance, you do see land in the distance. Okay. Um, well, now's as good as time as any to have dinner and keep a lookout up top in the crow's nest. Okay. We're not going to make a whole bunch of progress during the night. Okay. So y'all are uh, basically just kind of sitting and trying to catch a little bit of wind, but y'all are making slow progress. It's a good time to take a break, get some rest, um, have a big dinner. Um, all of the kobolds are excited. They're snickering. They're laughing. Uh, the kobolds are up to something. Not really sure, but you've noticed this all day. There, there seems to be an inside joke that they're excited about. And uh, as y'all are getting together for dinner, um, Coric comes up and says, Well, welcome. We appreciate the captain bringing all of us uh, on this, this grand journey. And um, as is customary, it is my duty to offer the master a, a, a token of our, our gratitude for allowing us to the honor of being in his service on our first night out. We had a little bit of a rough stow, but I think we did okay. And now we're in a strange land, and I'm sure there's treasure to be had. And when he says treasure, all the other couples go, treasure! You know, um, and he looks over, and um, he, he, he kind of like nods over to um, to Hawks and, and, and Molo, and they run over, and they, they go below deck, and they start dragging up a duffel bag, this giant, like, five, six-foot-long duffel bag. And he goes, all right, well, me and all the boys, we got together. And we decided we need to do something. We need to get you a, a proper present, a present of a master. And we decided that the thing that this crew doesn't have and what you need on it is your first slave. And all the kobolds go, slave, slave. And they've, they have abducted somebody from Port Nianzaru. And they drag this bag up. And, and they're all looking over. And he goes, now before, this was, I must say... Nabu had the idea, so I need to give him credit. And they open the bag, and unconscious inside the bag is Volo. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, my God. <laughs> he is bound. He's gagged. He looks like he got clubbed over the head a few times. So... Unconscious on your deck. He's unconscious right now. Is Volo. Do oh. I recognize him? You do. He was the guy that y'all... He, he was the guy you had never heard of that y'all paid a bunch of money for some Right, book. right. But I only saw him like with the books, and then they went and met him again later. Right. So you're like, who right? is this? You <laughs> vaguely remember this guy from the port. Isn't this... Uh... I'm immediately going to go, while this is a grand gesture... 
We don't abduct people without permission. <laughs> and they all goes, yeah. oh, no, no, Corrick gave us permission. Corrick gave us permission. And but he's like, he's only like, a good point. I, I did. <laughs> yeah, I do appreciate okay. the gesture, but uh, he's right. We shouldn't be just abducting people. Uh, I'm gonna, Probably a bad course of action. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say let's let's move him below, and let and Barnabas, can you bring him to? Yeah, I assume we have a cage for him down 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 below deck, right? And then there, Barnabas... there, no, there, no, 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 no. Don't so, offend the cobras. They so, enjoy it. A pro here is that. It might it, it's it's a good person to have with us, but Khan is slavery. So <laughs> <you know. laughs> is this customary? I'm going to ask the co- Cobalt. Is this customary? And and how, how did you decide on Volo? You know? Well, Nabu followed you and was looking for ideas for a gift, and he seemed to be knowledgeable and. He was out to shop oh. for a gift, and this is what he came back with. Where, where is Nabu? Nabu is like Nabu is sitting there, grinning ear to ear, like he's really earned his spot with the crew now. He's... <sighs> I can't hurt Nabu. Me, <laughs> Nabu. I thank you. You, you. you did well, but no more slaves. Oh, no yeah, more slaves. Yeah. Nabu. Just, but one, one slave is okay. Yes, yes. A temporary uh, slave. Temporary slave. For we'll call, oh, yeah. Do you do you know how he you didn't say like being in the cage tem- either, right? Yeah, right. Nabu, do you know how you say temporary slave in my language? Conscript. Contractor. 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 Let's call him that, okay? Because I'm pretty sure uh, that other word is a bad word in his language. Oh, uh, contractor. We contracted. Contractor. I like yes, that. There we go. We should contract more uh, people. Uh, we'll we'll talk about it. Uh, I'm gonna get Barnabas to rouse him. With a, All right. So a, Barnabas uh, Barnabas reaches down um, and and just lays his hand on him. He goes, oh, "Savers, give you some strength." And with that, like you see, like whatever blood and everything kind of dries up, and he kind of goes. Oh, and, and, and he's still he's still gagged. He's like, ah, ah, ah. I'm gonna, he's like, uh, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, hold, just calm down, calm down. I'm gonna take the gag off of him. He goes, what is it? What is it? What? What? Why am I here? Reference room at this point. I, I'm gonna tell him. Apparently, I wasn't aware that the kobolds who are our crew decided you sounded very knowledgeable and decided to abduct you without us knowing. Well, I'll tell you what you. Let me go, and no hard feelings. Yes? Oh, you're freed, and I'm going to let him go. I well, said, but here's the problem, Volo. We're already on the other side. We're in Mastara now. What? No. No, no. No, people don't come back from there. I, you shouldn't be there. I, we should. Well, we need to go back. We should go back immediately. Well, or at least you, drop me off. L- listen, Vo- Volo, you just, you just said it yourself. People don't come back from here. I did just you're, say that. You're 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 a little stuck. I the only way is forward, and my we're not, friend. And we're not we're not yeah we're not sh- turning this ship around. The only way is forward. When you go through the whirlpool, it's a catastrophic event, and we've lost our. We don't know where it is. Oh no, no way home. Stuck. And he's just kind of like looking lost for us. He goes, but I don't. And he looks up. What? what? Am I? Am I your captor? Am I, no, am I your prisoner? No, your is that you're going to find some treasure. Treasure? I, no, I, I'm going to tell you. Uh, you forced me to come on your treasure hunt? We didn't. The kobolds did. Blast yeah, it. the Blast kobolds it. forced you. Uh, okay. I'm quite, uh, you are uh, quite uh, stuck, though. Bolo, you are the greatest writer in Faerun. What better book to write than... But one I, about a place no one has ever been. I prefer taverns and, and, and theater and, and hearing the stories from sages and bards and minstrels and if such. If you would like to stay on the boat, that's fine. I will stay on the boat. 
Or if you would like to not stay on the boat, that's fine as well. I will stay on the boat. I will stay in the boat. But it will be with only the kobolds. I don't have a good choice here. We'll think about it. <laughs> Korik, let's let's start writing writing up his contract. And I have Uh-oh. okay. We owe him big time. All right. So um, so Korik looks like he goes contract. He's a slave. Uh, and he goes contractor, 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 contractor. He'll he'll, 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 he'll agree to continue with us. Stay on the slave. Say all right. Well, you're the you're the captain. It's your word. He's a contractor. All right, so with that, um, he goes and pulls out a parchment and starts saying, you know, he starts writing, you know, for the rest of your life, you are ours. What? I said, no, 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 no. Cross that out. Cross that out. <laughs> for the Until rest the of your time, this... for the rest in, of your time, in... Miss Stara. There we go. That's much better. Write that down. Write that down. All right, right, right. right. So he, he starts working on the contract. Um, yeah, in he's return still, for he's his safety tied. on this ship, <laughs> he will perform certain services. Certain services, such as? Uh, uh, the mob. Write something vague. <laughs> vague. Write something vague. Mm. <laughs> ah. Something vague. General pirating <laughs> duties. For pirates. Good. Yes, good. Yes, good. Yes, good. And treasure hunting. Ah. Treasure hunting, yes. yes. All right, so he writes up the contract, and he, he kind of takes it over and goes, you will sign. And he's, like, tied. He's, like, looking over and goes, I see I have many options. And he kind of takes the quill and <laughs> signs it. And how long does this voyage going to take? Your guess is Isn't as good as ours. <laughs> will I be Barnabas, t- ask the ask that man there. Yeah, ask the turtle. Um, so. Will I be tied for the duration of this trip? I'm going to take my spear and cut his. Okay, so you cut him off. He goes, oh, man. All right. He reaches around. And he puts his hat on. Looks around. He goes, well, I'm hungry. Do you have any wet wine? I should use a drink. Or well, six. <laughs> I'm going to tell. Uh, We've got some mead down below. Yeah. We got Cobbled a fetch him a meal and something to drink. Alright, so you, you hand him like a, a bowl of, of, of shark soup and, and an ale or mead. You have mead here. And uh he yeah, says the, the drink- wine is for the crew, not for just contractors. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> contractors ale. drink mead. Mead, okay. Right. So he drinks the mead, he's sitting there and goes Alright, and he I mean he's now at least he does have his backpack with him that Nabu grabs, whatever he had with him at the tavern he has. Um, other than that, he doesn't have much with him. I mean, his shirt, pants, boots, and his pack. Uh, a, I, I, a want dagger. To, I want to whisper to him aside and said, Vola, we are, we are sorry. This was not intended, but we're a new crew, and we don't want to offend the kobolds right now because we need everybody pulling them in the same direction to make sure that we get back. Whatever your intentions, uh, our fates are now intertwined. We will need that each they other. Are, sir. We will need each other to survive this place. Yes. Maybe we'll catch a Leviathan or two. I would very much not like that to happen. <laughs> I'm gonna pat him on the back really hard and walk off. Alright. With that poor Volo. Um everyone gets a rest. <laughs> um where is Volo staying? In the brig. Uh, I do think for his safety, we're going to keep him in a locked room. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm going to tell him, we don't know what these kobolds are up to. We just met them. They abducted you on the first night. We just saw them barbecue, I mean, uh, shred a shark in three seconds. Maybe it's a big good idea. I'll lock the door. I'll come get him out in the morning. I'll keep the key on me. I he can s- stay with me. Huh? He's going to stay with I, you in the chapel. Yeah, oh, thank yeah. you. Thank you, Mr. Fulbog. I appreciate both options, but I think I'll stay with the, my freedom with this large chap here. Let me know if the snoring's too bad. The key is always ready to open up the brick. I appreciate the offer. Um, all right, so with that, um, Volo is going to go stay with, with you in uh, the chapel. 
Uh, he has like a, basically you know set up a hammock between uh, like the wall and the, the mast. Um, you know, it's like there's a couple in there that you can sleep on. Um, so he's in there um, and uh, with you, and he's going through his bag. You do see that he pulls out um, a, a fairly large book and some scrolls, and he's looking through it, and he goes, "Oh no, oh no." He's looking around. He goes. And he's looking around. And he goes. Oh, there it is. And he pulls out. He's got this little gem. He goes. I needed that. I was, my lucky gem. And he's my lucky gem. Um. He looks up. He goes. Why? Are, why are you here? Did they contract you as well? Um. No. I'm. I'm part of the journey. I'm just. Uh, I'm. Never been on a ship, but. I feel like I uh, I worship Maliki. She has told me to come here. Maliki, it's not a deity I'm too familiar with. Nature god, I believe. Yes, forests. And um, he he starts laying there, and he goes, "Wait, wait, are we going to that island with the dragons? We're not going to the island with the dragons." Um, uh, no. Oh, good. <laughs> And with that, he goes. He 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 falls asleep in the comfort of not going to an island with the dragons. All right. <laughs> so we go get our, our our long rests. We're rested. As keeping we, watch. Keeping watch through the night. And in the morning, I, so I guess y'all have decided that y'all are sailing for once you find the island and find your direction on the island using the maps. You're looking for that particular cove, correct? If we find it, we'll anchor. Not okay. All right. In the yeah. So as you're sailing throughout the night, um, in the first break of morning, um, McGrundin, you're up first. Um, a few of the cobalts are scudding about. There is a ton of fog, and um, while the sun of this world is up, um, you you look around and it's still as morning comes there's a really thick fog which while it hurts visibility the cobalts actually are much better at working in darkness and in fog than in the day this is actually better for them they're better sailing now um in in this fog and in the distance you hear out uh above um one of the cobalts uh, calls out land land he looks out and goes three land Freeland, and you look, and in the distance, he's 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 like pointing out, um, and and you see another cobalt running up to mast and comes back down, and he comes back and he goes, <laughs> report uh, three islands off the starboard bow, uh, uh, I guess I don't know if this is north, but this way, three islands, small islands. All right, uh, turn towards the islands. Let's see what right, we so can you, find. You kind of start turning towards the island. Um, so with that, Finn, you're back up. You've got the map now between y'all. Everyone here has like some sk shared skills. Like Finn's got, um, cartography. I believe, um, McGrundy, you've got navigator stuff. So between the two of you looking at the map, looking at navigation, stars are totally throwing you. They're completely different here, but you are, you're, instead of using the stars, you're actually looking at the land and you see three islands. Looking at the map, there's only a handful of places you could be with three islands. There's one, two, three up top here. There's one, two, three over here. And you could be south here and be seeing these <laughs> three anywhere. islands. Huh? Okay, so do we see any volcanic, like, anything beyond the islands, like lava or any glow or anything that you, could be coming You from do not volcanoes? see a volcano. Huh. And the volcano, there's a volcano at the top one, and there's a volcano beyond those. So I but you think can't, you couldn't be... see this far though. Yeah, you can only true. see the islands themselves. The islands that you're looking at do not have a volcano. Where this one would have a volcano. Okay, so we know we're in one of those two. You're in the, you're, you're, you're definitely this side of the island. Okay. I so, say we keep just get. I say we keep sailing and see if we see structures like man-made looking structures. We'll know we're at the southeast. If we see a if we see a volcano to the port side, the we know that we're here. 
if we see that vo small volcano island to our starboard side, we know we're on this side. Okay. Mm. All right. Do we get a, so the only way to tell is we have to go straight for the islands, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. So with that, what I would like to do is I want to get a cartography check since we're using a lot of uh, Finn's cartography. So um, I can't remember how we did cartography before. Well, remember, we have the original map now. Well, this isn't. Y'all have two maps. Y'all have the yes. hand drawn one. They're both hand drawn. This one is way better than the other one. Right. One of them is actually Volo's map. Right. Oh, that's right. You do have Volo's He's map. He's on the boat. Right. Nice. So you go up and you have hey, Volo's map. We've taken, and, uh, do, we've taken a hit map of slave. We might as well steal his stuff, too. <laughs> Contractor. Yeah. Um, does he get advantage on this since I'm using my navigator's tools to help him? Uh, yes. I have no idea what to roll. Knowledge? This would be an uh, intelligence check. Plus proficiency, right? Yeah. So, uh, just a d20 plus three. And you have advantage, so you can roll it twice. Uh -oh. So, 15 or... We'll go with the 15. All right. Okay. So, using the map, you, you can see that you are here. Okay. You see... As you go up, these were the three that you saw. Y'all turned. You're kind of in this area, and you do see a two islands off to the side as well um, through the fog, one of which does have uh, a volcano. All right. So you, you're I'm pretty gonna... much using these. Yeah. So which way do y'all want to go? McGrindon, I recommend on. we... We're going to go in. All right, Here. I am looking for the yellow ping because that's the captain. So which way are we going, Captain? Because we're going here eventually, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, he's right. We should we should sail up through the waters here. Okay. All right. With that, I need one person to give me a percentile roll, and whatever that person rolls is the fate of the crew. <laughs> Very good. Very good. Well, half and half. You're good. So you end up sailing right past. Um, oh. You sail right in without a problem. You have you have successfully sailed into the waters. All right. With that, that was close. All right. So we don't. This is the Isle of Dread, I suppose we should recall. All right. That's beautiful. So this is what you're sailing into. This is that cove. So as you're sailing in, um, you see massive trees. You see uh, a little bit of mountain. And this this water, I, I'm actually wearing the, the Jurassic Park shirt. <laughs> as you're sailing in, um, you do see that this, 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 this ocean kind of like turns into... A bit of a bog and according to the map once you go through the bog there's apparently a river so so i don't we don't want to anchor in the bog so we outside the bog for that okay almost like we'll be taking a small little boat through this as mighty savras spoke through his prophet barnabas we can I'm walk gonna, on the side. <laughs> I'm going to make a, a suggestion real quick, and I'm going to say, Feligar, yes. can you lower me upside down on a rope here so I can take a look and see what we have and uh, pull me back up if anything goes crazy? Sure, sure. So I'm going to take the rope, and I'm going to take a loop and hook my foot in it and kind of hang upside down, and, and I just want a quick look around in the water to make sure there's nothing crazy going on here. All right, um, you go down the water, um, and you see, actually, <laughs> um, you do see lots of uh, kind of odd-looking fish. 
Um, they've got these sharp teeth kind of jowled out like this, like if I bottom up. And you see that they're all darting around like crazy as the boat is kind of coming in, slowing down. You're slowing down as you're kind of coming into the cove. And all of them are, are darting around. And you see one of them, you see this giant hammerhead shark go and grab another one. Um, and then all of a sudden, the blood off of that one, other sharks start like swimming around like crazy. Ooh. So, mainly hammerhead sharks. Okay. All right. But no, like, skeletons scouring the bottom of the... Okay. No, you don't see anything All right. like that. All right. Not pull yet. the rope. Go back up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So, McGrundon, do you think we should anchor here? Is the crew going to be safe? Yeah, I, I agree up? with that. Yeah, we'll... we'll We'll find a place near the land. We'll we'll. I don't want to take this through the bog. We can come back to the ship. We need somebody strong to stay with the ship to make sure that they're protected. So I agree. What you're saying we is can you take need a landing party with us onto the island. Yeah, I think uh, Felagar may need to stay. And. Okay. Uh, is Volo considered NPC material, or does um, he need to... Volo does not count towards the party. Y'all decide which y'all want to do. Y'all, Volo is a is an X factor. So, which NPC would y'all? So, I'm assuming you three are going to go. Do y'all want to take one of the NPCs with you as a fourth party member? Yes, yeah, so it, be... it could be Barnabas, Coric, or Feligar. Well, we leave Feligar. Okay. Right? What about Nabu? Yeah. We can't take Nabu? He would be an X factor. He doesn't really add a lot to the. Uh, the he adventure. needs to work on the boat. Actually, yeah, he's got to work on the boat. He's got to repair the boat. Oh, that's right. Okay. So do we take uh, do we take our new kobold friend? Take or do we Cork bring or Barnabas? Uh, Tortle Sanders. Uh, Tortle Sanders can heal. Correct. Glendon? But we haven't seen what the Cobalt can do, and he's kind of badass looking. It's true. I I'm gonna vote for I'm gonna vote for Coric. Okay. All right. I'm gonna vote for so Coric. Feligar is in charge uh, of the boat. Coric will be joining you. Uh, we'll take a Cobalt with us. Sorry. And then, <laughs> one red shirt Cobalt. Huh? Um. Do you want him? Don't to bring the one that can cook. Do you want to bring any of the extra Cobalts? Because Cork could bring a cobalt. One? Just one. All right. Hawks, Molo, Varn, On, or Goto? On's the one who can cook, right? Uh, Kaba is the one that can cook. I left him off. Okay. Goto. Okay. Goto. Goto it is. All right. So Goto, Cork will Goto join you. Now the question is, is Volo going with you as well on the on the land? Well, we're going to go to go. We're going to go to Volo and say, okay. Here's your options. You stay with us for protection as we travel inland. Or you stay on the boat here with lesser forces. In the brig. Who knows what's going to attack you. Yeah, exactly. Um, but there you are. How long will you be gone? Uh, Depends whether we survive. So I can stay here on the boat with all of these dreaded kobolds and the giant minotaur or I can go with you. Again, we we give you plenty of great options. I guess I'll be going with you. Good choice. Okay. We won't have to lock you in the brig that way. Also a determining factor for my decision. <laughs> Well, <laughs> do we need to take two boats or one? Um, there will be four of you plus two kobolds. You can fit in one boat. Okay. Okay, so we have a small boat on our boat. You have two. You have two small rowboats. Rowboats. Ooh. Gotcha. Okay. All right. Um, who's rowing? McGrundon Linden. and his oh. duplicate. <laughs> 
Perfectly balanced strength. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, you all begin to row out into the bog. Wait, is it really me and the echo? Uh, yeah. No, I'll row too because I don't do much on the ship. That's all what right. All right. Um, okay. <laughs> The marsh. All right. So oh, you, yes. As we're as we're moving through, I want to cut one of these large sticks that are st- sticking up out of the water, and we can use it as poles once we get towards the bog area. Okay, that's not a problem. How much scouting are you doing, Finn? You are you I doing? Mean, I can scouting? Yeah, I can hop into the water and take a look around till we get to the bog part. Okay. Um, you you kind of keep looking in the water. You kind of ducking down. Um, outside of some strange, there's also eel. You're seeing a lot of eels swimming about. It's it's really nasty fish, sharks, um, and smaller fish are getting eaten by everything else. Um, it's pretty nasty. The closer that you get, um, the water itself becomes very foul, and yeah, you have a hard time that. breathing in it. And you get up, and you're like, I mean, you've you've been in swampy areas before this is beyond that whatever whatever is is in this is disgusting um it is quite foul um and as you get closer into the swamp like you get the point where like you're having to kind of like almost like drag the boat um and you get up to the point where you're you're on like semi land so you've gone as far enough into the bog where at this point um it is it's so much weight is in the boat you're not gonna be able to like pull it because the water is extremely thin at this point and it's like you're still like you see like ground but then like you would step on the ground and it's like marsh just like this so at this point you're gonna have to get out of the boat and drag and it drag and the boat yeah yeah so at this point everyone gets out of the boat um volo gets out now he's got these knee-high boots which are like perfect you know so he gets and starts sloshing around he's got his backpack um he looks around and um he starts one of those sticks that you were using. He picks it up and he goes, "Mind if I take this?" Because he's got he's got no armor, no weapons. Yeah, that, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm sorry, he has a dagger. Um, all right, so he kind of he starts using that to kind of like balance himself, and he's kind of staying in the middle, like wherever y'all are. He's staying kind of close to the boat. Who's pulling the boat? Big boys. All right, McGrundon is pulling the boat. Um, Gabo is in the back. Uh, Gato, uh, Godo, sorry. Godo is in the back. He's helping push the boat. He's pushing the boat behind. <laughs> from uh, inside the boat. Huh? He's no, pushing from inside. No, no, he's the out. Boat. He's outside. But see, for him, like, y'all are in, like, a foot of water. For him, that's up to his waist. But he's still, he's, he's like, trudging and pushing it along. Yeah. Um, I'll help him. I'll it's help. it's very foggy. It's he's like that, that fog that y'all sailed through has continued as you're going through. Um,. Now, what's the line here? So you've got basically the boat's kind of the back. So um, Godo is the very back. Um, you've got uh, Volo kind of standing next to that. You've got McGrundon pulling it. Um, where are, and Cork will be, I guess, right there, like helping pull the boat as well. Where is, where's Finn and, and Glendon in this scene? I'm behind the boat. You're behind the boat. So who, so Glendon, are you up front? Yeah, I'll go up front. Okay. All right, so you're up front. Um, it's dark um, and it's foggy. It's it's even though it's day, the fog is so thick in this. Uh, as you're sloshing around, um, in a moment you reach up, you you see this this light emanate from behind you. You turn around and look, and um, and you see that Coric uh, has like handed a torch, and he's like running it up, and he hands you a torch um, that he lit. And uh, he goes, take this. It'll help you. It'll help you. Um, and he looks about. Dangerous to go alone. It's dangerous to go alone. Take this. Uh, as he hands you the torch as you go forward. Um, now, Gl- Glendon, you're in the front. And in the distance in the bog, you see a, a boulder um, sticking out of the bog in front. So it's giving you like a point. Like, okay, we got to get to this bog. You see this boulder. Okay. As you get closer to the boulder, you notice it looks carved. And as you get even closer to it, you looked at it almost looks like um a face is sticking out of the bog itself like the stone is actually a carved face that's sticking out of the bog okay i'll uh who's around me um the closest person to you would probably be finn 
No, yeah. Finn's behind the boat, right? That's so the closest person uh-huh. is actually McGrundon. They're like, all right, look, we got some sort. I don't know if this is a statue or some sort of creature, but there's some sort of stone boulder head up a, up ahead. Beyond wall. Do you want to do you want to check it out? I'm a little busy pulling this boat. Yeah. Um, or do you want me to check it out? And you can pull the boat. Huh? No, I can check it out. All, all right. right. Yeah, uh, yell, yell, yell if you need. All right, so you, uh, you, I guess you kind of like slosh ahead. Um, you get to this. It looks like there's like moss kind of growing over the top of this stone head that's sticking up. The nose, most predominantly, is sticking up. And uh, you look at it, and it, it almost looks like the the carving itself. Maybe it's the smooth features. Looks human, um, possibly female. Like it was a female statue head. But you look half around. Dwarf. Huh? Possibly half dwarf, human dwarf. Could be human. Could be dwarf. Old reference. (laughs) Old reference Um, at this point. So is it, Glendon? What do you want to do as you're as you're looking over the statue head? About how far away am I? Um, you're right up on it at this point. Okay. Yeah, I'm just gonna like walk around it, you know, with the torch and see, just kind of study it a little. Is it completely out of the water? Half at this point, or is it? Okay. Okay. Um, I'll, you know what? I'll ask Volo to come up and be like, what, ask him what does he make of it, since he's Mister Lore History Man. Okay, that's fair. Let me. Uh, are we heading towards this thing anyway? Like, are we all yeah. heading this way, or is it all? Yeah, the side? right now you don't really know yeah. what direction you're. Just kind of going in a direction that looks like inland, and this is kind of on the way inland. Um, hang on. <clears throat> Okay. Yes, he will investigate. Yes, he will investigate. All right, so he's going to go up and take a look at it. I'll slap him with some guidance. Oh, yeah, you will. Okay. Slap that boy with some guidance. He looks like, oh, this is quite odd. I mean, if I didn't know we were in Mastara, I would think that we were in Faerun. This head is quite odd. I've seen a statue with his face in Faerun. A few, actually. One in Waterdeep and another in Baldur's Gate. Look at it. It's a female. You know, you know. Who yeah. is it? I, I believe it's Umberly. Oh, boy. Ooh. Uh oh. That gives me Good like thing. an intense sense of dread. <laughs> but bumbly. Why would this uh, be here? But that's not good. That's not good at all. Am I getting any feelings from the amulet getting close to this thing? Ooh. Um. All right, so you stop and you you hold on to that, um, and you you do sense, um, you like you're at peace with this place. You feel calm. I feel feel calm. I feel like I'm almost at peace with this place. Good. Thanks. Thanks for letting us know that. Right, as I'm y'all not. are having this conversation, <laughs> as you're having this conversation, um. Finn, give me a perception check. Perception. <laughs> All right. Y'all are standing in a few inches of water, maybe a foot of water. And as they're having this conversation, uh, Finn, against your foot, because you're kind of barefoot or you're, I mean, sandals or something. Yeah. No one else would ever feel this, but you feel the very slightest movement of water, as if something has disturbed the water 
from a distance. It is extremely slight. We're talking like a centimeter off. But you have spent so much time in water, you know the feel of the water, you can kind of control it in some ways. You know something outside of your party stirred that water to your right. And it's still like really thick fog around us? Yes. Um, I'm going to spin around, and without saying a word, I'm going to gust of wind as the fog around us. Okay, so you you gust of wind when you when you do that, and about twenty feet away from you, um, that that as that fog pushes out, you you suddenly um, see the 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 shadow of an individual running across a bank, and when that wind hits. He, whatever that is, stops and spins around behind the tree. I'm going to say we're not alone, my friends. How far away is he? 20 feet. 25. Uh, 25 feet. Make a deck save? Oh! I uh, I use my breath weapon. Oh! <laughs> Jesus. It's, as soon as I see him, I, I let loose. All right. I make it. Um, okay, I he get takes half, half damage, and it's three d six now. Excellent. Uh, give him half of eleven. All right, so six. All right, so um, your lightning like shoots through it. It further dissipates some of the fog. You actually it arcs around the tree that he was behind, and it hits. And you see him like you see him just like something hit and he explodes and you see this this man this humanoid um as he falls down you look his hands are together like they're bound and he falls no. over the ground and you hear him go, and he starts like grunting in a language you don't understand um but he's writhing around on the ground i'm gonna look to volo and say do you recognize that language no but he pulls out. He starts stumbling. And says, Given time, I, I, I could figure it out. Uh, let's let's proceed towards the individual together. Okay. Um, On alert. On alert. All right. So y'all all start moving towards the individual. He's kind of rolling around on the ground. You see him like kick up. He has like a lot of hair, and he kind of you see him like kick his hair back, and he looks over in the darkness. He looks at you, and you hear him growl at you. And um, you look up, he's very cat-like as he moves around. In fact, he has a tail that kind of swashes about. Like it has like a, like, a, like a hair on the end of his tail. And he looks around, and he's still bound. And he, he looks around, and you see him trying to like, he, he's trying to like um, cut his bindings up against a stone as y'all are getting close. And he's like, he's, like, he, he's talking back to you, but it's this, it's this growl language you just don't understand. It just comes across as gibberish. I'm going to I'm gonna look to everybody to the side and kind of put my hands up and be like, kind of gesture like, sorry, you alarmed us. Kind of like, hold on. Try to persuade him to calm down. Okay. Um, let me think. So you're, you're up there. McGrundon, you just did your, your – Glendon, give me a perception check. All right. Oh, good. All right. So, what's going to happen? All right. So, um, you, you, your, your ear kind of does this number. It twitches, and you hear something sloshing in the distance. Um, you turn and look, and at that moment, busting out of the trees and, and and splashing into the bog, you see several of these lizard men running across the bog. Um, because you didn't really do too well on your perception check, we're just going to have a straight roll of initiative because everyone is seeing each other for the first time. All at the same time. So I'm going to move to another map. I'm going to place everybody and everybody roll initiative. Uh, I'm going to remind everybody, as soon as I see the lizard folk, I remember cannibals. Well, it's a good thing I'm not a lizard folk. Uh, okay. Right. No. All right, I know we're getting short on time, so we're going to have to okay. fly through this. 21. I don't think I've lost an initiative check yet. All right, uh, there's Cork. 
uh, there's Volo, there's the Skeef. <laughs> The <laughs> uh, there's Finn McGrundon's right next to you Glendon you're slightly off to the side here um, actually I think you're more like this yeah um, they're back there alright that's the five of you alright and then where's the helpless captain we just saw uh ride uh he's back over he's on the map he's behind the tree you may have to scroll it over oh um lizard man lizard man lizard man another type of lizard man which way was the cat person running from he was running this way down. He was running down this way. From the lizard, okay. lizard means. Kind of in that direction, yeah. All right, so now let's go over. Okay, so we got to add a bunch of turns here. All right. Add a turn. Add a turn. Add the old turn. I'm trying. I'm going as fast as I can. I know time is of the essence here. All right. All right. All the initiatives. Okay. Uh-huh. So let's see who rolled what. I got a twenty one. All right, Finn got a 21. McGrunny, did you get an 18? McGrunny got an 18. Oh, wow. Correct. How'd you put it in there already? Glendon, what'd you get? I clicked it and I entered it. Uh, 12. Good. All right. Um, Mr. Volo will be going on a four. Which one is Finn? Oh, there we go. Uh, yeah, Coric. Be going. Oh, are you rolling the initiative for the rest of them? Yeah. Sorry, this is going to take me a second. I'm going to go as fast as I can. He's going to go on a 15. Large party, lots of initiatives. All right. Guy in the back. Eh, is a, ooh, 19. Um, all these little jabronis, the other lizard guys, are going to go at a 13. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to um, keep all those together. There we go. Sorry, I'm going as quickly as we can. Uh, okay, 12. And our cat friend. Dead last. Yeah. All right. So Volo, come on down here. Finn, you're up top. 19, 15, 13, 13, 18. Okay. All right. Finn, you are first in the order of attacking and doing things. All right. All right, so the gust of wind is still going because it's up to a minute. Okay. Uh, I'm going to move, let's see, I can go 40, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. Okay. And I'm going to reverse the gust of wind and go towards them, 10 foot wide. So I'm going to try to hit this group of three. Okay, and what do I have to make? It is a strength save of... I made all three. Okay. But now they are... Um, In difficult terrain? Yeah, they must succeed a strength saving throw or be pushed 15 feet away 
Okay. Any creature, any creature in the line must spend two feet of movement for every one foot they move. That'll definitely slow them down. Okay, so the three guys in the middle are all basically hampered with the gust of wind. All right, is that it for you? Uh, and I'm going to take a key point for the defense thing. Okay, so you're dodging. Okay. All right, yeah. patient defense. Go into so. All right, so you go up, you move, you push the wind. Um, they're all being hampered as you're doing that. It's kicking up all the slop of the swamp at them. Um, the entire smell of the place, the, the, that, that nasty bog smell is now like being pushed around and kicked up. So it smells even worse. Um, with that, um, um, okay. This guy in the back here. Um, all right, he's going to um, cast. He begins to like move his hands about, and he he he, he points over at at you, uh, Pim. Mm-hmm. And actually, no, he's pointing at the guy behind you. He's gonna have to step up to do this. He's gonna point at Glendon. Uh, Glendon, make a will saving throw. Wisdom saving throw. Sorry, wisdom right. saving throw. You make it. All right. Whatever strange incantation he's pushing on you, you kind of step back and and you feel the presence of my leaky like come over you and 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 push something off of you. Um, for a brief second, you felt like your your arm your chainmail like get hot for like a split second and then it dissipates off of you. Um, but you do feel the presence of my leaky as you shake that off. Um, McGrundin, it is now your right. turn. Uh, I'm going to manifest my echo. Yes, you are. In this vicinity. You can actually control that now. I made you a uh, owner of that. Oh, it's where is he? Under follow? followers echo. I'll get it. Uh, oh, you got it. Oh. Where do you want it? Get rid of that. All right. Oh, this is great. Oh, this is great. Let's we'll just put them right here. Okay. And then I'm going to go do do 5, 10, 15, 20. And I'll use my glaive. I'm going to cut his his bounds. All right, so you pull out free. this massive glaive. It swings down. Um, he goes to, like, roll out of the way. You manage to get his... He didn't know what you were doing. Uh, but you go and you cut his binds. And uh, he kind of looks up at you in bewilderment. Um, is there anything else you want to do with that move? You just uh, bring that up. That's, up. that's all I got. Gotcha. Yeah, okay. that's my action and my bonus action. All right, gotcha. All right. Um, Korik. Um, all my millions of paperwork. Okay. Cork, I know what he's going to do. Uh, he's, he's a brave kobold. 5, 10, 15, 20. Poor bastard. 25. All right. He's going to get right there. Um, and he, he, he just runs up and he goes, and he just breathes out this dragon breath comes out of his mouth. Um, and it's going to engulf all three of these. They'll all have to make a deck saving throw. Uh, so the first guy here makes a deck save. He fails. The guy behind him makes a deck save. He passes. And the guy to the left passes. All right, so the guy in front... Um, can you look up Dragon Breath real quick? What does that... I can't... Player's Handbook is missing. Laszlo, can you look it up for me? What this the spell? The spell or... is called Dragon Breath. What is it? It's a second level sorcerer <laughs> spell. I've got cone, it just doesn't say the damage on it. Uh, let's see. I think it's five D four. See if I'm right. Three D six. Three D six, okay. I was not even. That's close. what I'm seeing. All right, so oh, it's from Xanathar. Okay, gotcha. Twelve damage. Okay, so the guy in front takes twelve. The other two take six. All right, hey, so dude. he's he like lights up. He's just he's breathing. Now this is a concentration spell, so he'll keep it up. We got the little sorcerer, huh? Yeah. Little sorcerer. 
little sorcerer friend. Mm. Okay. Um, oh, that's Korik. All right, this guy up in front, he's going to run up and try to stab Korik. And he is going to hit. Korik will take six slashing damage. Now, he's attacking him with what looks like, like a, a tomahawk. It's like a stone tomahawk. Um, he hits him with that attack. Um, he's going to then uh, try to bite at him. He hits with a bite as well. God. All right, Korik, um, he takes the hit off of that. He turns around and takes another hit off of the other one. i got to make two concentration checks. Uh, pass both of them like a champ. All right, so he's still breathing. He is, he's breathing fire. The fire's now going up in the sky as he as he's just getting hampered by the sky. Um, this guy here is going to run up and attack him as well. Oh, no, wait. We're not to him yet. We're up to this guy. Um, he's going to run up to Finn. And he's going to... Oh, wait, he can only get to here because of the wind, and he can't get all the way there because of the wind. So these guys are trying to run up against uh, Finn with the wind. They can't get there. Do um, they make another strength? Uh, I don't think they – I think the strength saving throw you made the first time was for this turn. This turn, it, that's it, fine. It, so it, they're, they're pushing through, but it's still half distance. So they're running. Actually, they'll spend their entire turn to get there. They can uh, use their action to get there, but they just can't attack. So they get up to you, basically. Okay. Um, all right, so – He's gone, he's gone, he's gone, he's gone. All right, Glinden, it's your turn. All right, I'm going to cast Fairy Fire right here. Oh, snap. And that can hit all three. You can hit all four of these it's guys. It's a 20-foot cube. So if you put it here, Ooh. you can get all four yeah. of these guys. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll three for the jabronis. Uh, fail, fail, fail. Wait, maybe one passed. What do I got to make? It says dex 12. Okay. All right. So this guy passed it. These guys, the other two failed it. The guy in the back passed. Okay. So these two guys are now lit up. So anyone that attacks these guys get advantage. All right. That is your action. Do you have anything you want to do for bonus action or for your movement? Um. <clears throat> No, I'm good for right now. He's just standing. I'm just gonna there. stay planted. Okay. Yeah. Um. All right. Volo's turn. He's gonna go jump in the boat and hide. <laughs> good man. All right. This guy here, uh, the cat, looks up at you. As you look up, he has the head of a lion and he has this giant mane. And he looks at you and he 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 pulls out his his claws. Whoosh, and with that, he's going to run forward past you. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. And then he's going to leap to there. All right, so he's going to run. He's going to leap. He's going to – he 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 roars into this, this massive rage as he comes down to attack um, this guy here with a mighty 19. Which will do damage, but he's hitting him with a claw. How how agile that feline is. He's how quite agile. He is quite agile. That feline is. Alright, he does a, a massive little little kitty scratch to the uh, guy in the back. <laughs> yeah. Alright, top of the round, Finn. <laughs> Here okay. kitty kitty kitty. Here kitty kitty. Uh Hunter's Mark, <laughs> the guy directly in front of me. Okay. Yes, you are. And then we're gonna go. Yeah. So that's your bonus action. So now yep. spear him. Yep. All right, this attack has advantage because of fairy fire. All right, so this is the two-handed spear. Uh, we'll take the 14. Okay. And now roll another d6 for damage. He did eight damage with the spear plus a d6 for Hunter's Mark. Okay. Um... Oh, 
Alright, with that, um, you stab through. He goes to parry your attack. You slide your spear right past it. You actually get him right in the chest. You you impale him. You pull it back out, and you hear this 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 guttural scream, and you see his tongue like lashing out as you pull back, and he just falls and splashes back into the water. He is out. Does the hunter's mark move? It or? can on your next action. Okay. You have to bonus. Don't you have to bonus action move it? Uh, I'll look it up. I think so. Uh, I think I want to take my patient defense again. That's a bonus action. And you've already used oh, it for it? Hunter's Mark. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. All right. Next, we go to the guy in the back. All right. At this point, he's kind of re- reading the situation. And he's going to come up here and he's going to try to club Cork over the head. Um, he's going to get advantage on the attack because he'll be flanking or Cork. And he's going to whack Cork over the head for a mighty 10 damage. Cork will be dead. Um, Cork goes Ooh. down! Cork is dead! Ooh, a last Cork. Cork, we knew him well. Alright, Cork falls unconscious into the water. Um, with that, um, this, let's see where are we at. No, we're up to McGrundon. All right, I'm gonna trade plays. I'm gonna use a bonus action to trade, trade places. places. Oh, I'm sorry. I got gotcha. you. Well, first I'll, I'll I'll move my echo. Okay. Move it thirty feet, and then I will trade places with it. Okay. All right. And I will attack. We'll attack this guy. Well, that guy's right. dead, but you can reach and attack the other guy. I will reach and attack the other guy. So at this point, you're actually standing on top of the face, right. and you can reach over. Uh, you get advantage on the attack because you'll be flanking. Okay. And fairy fire. Oh, and fairy fire. So all the advantage. Oh, and fairy yeah. fire, yeah. All right, so that's 10 plus. So bonus. that is. I'm looking, uh, it's only 13. Okay. Um, you come down, he blocks it with a shield. He blocks it with his shield as you attack. You actually catch part of, like, your your glaive actually cuts into the shield and you pull it back out. There's this large gash in his wooden shield as you pull it back up. Um, Korik's turn. He will make a death save. Uh, it's fail. It's a hard fail. One down for Korik. All right. Next, we go to... This guy right here, he's going to raise his tomahawk in the air and club Korik and kill him. <laughs> Korik is dead. Oh. Oh no. What's for that? The Leroy Jinx- Jenkins thing. Korik. Oh. Korik is no more. He is quite dead. <laughs> All right, so um, we hardly knew ye. Legendary, my ass. <laughs> Corrit goes down. All right, um, after he kills him, he's going to run over and get in position with Mister uh, Lion. Um, uh, can he? Can he make that with a win? Let me see. That's a good. That's a very solid question. There is wind going. No, he cannot. Fails well, the strength. Five. Nope, he can't. He's going to get to here. Okay. Well, he, he gets pushed back because he failed his strength check. That's 15 right. 15 feet. So, 5, 10. So, he'll, we'll put him there. All right. So, he kills he kills him and then gets pushed back. Yep. Okay. All right. Does Or does he do that at the start of his turn? Mm, I think it's the start of his turn, actually. If that's the case, this, 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 this guy's alive. Let me, uh, let me get Gust of Wind real quick. Point of order. Does Gust of Wind happen at the beginning or the end of his turn? It says, each creature that starts its turn in the line... Alright, so he reaches up turn. to kill Korok, and the wind pushes him back 15 feet. Excellent. <gasps> wow. That was... Alright. And then he'll spend his turn 5, 10... He gets about there. That's just actually... He can then, he can still, he gets pushed back 15. Yeah, we'll, we'll put him there. All right. Um, all right. So this guy here. Uh, 
Uh, he is going to... Which one are we talking about? The one on the cat? This guy. Yeah. Um, okay. He's going to... Um, he's going to cast, cast a spell. And I need the cat. And I also need... Um, I need all the heroes here. I need Finn, McGrundon, and the cat to all make a wisdom saving... Oh, sorry. A dex saving throw. This is a dexterity saving throw. Oh, that's... Why we have a pass. We have another pass. 16. And we have a fail. <laughs> all right. Um, the, all these vines come ripping out of the swamp and, and kicking water everywhere. Y'all both jump out of the way as they try to uh, go around your feet. They grab the lion, and he's now restrained um, from uh, all of the, the vines. And at that point, um, he steps back. Back. He's gonna go this way to get out of that wind. Okay. See, provoke an attack of opportunity. He is entangled. It'll be with disadvantage, but he does. Uh, <laughs> it's a good thing what too, because that natty would have hurt. What a shame. So he missed. All right. Um, all right. So that's his turn. We go to Glendon. All right. This one's still alive, right? Correct. Let me put the the X on that one. There we go. It looks like there's a little one on there. Um, all right. I'm going to move and then hit, well, try to hit him. Let's all right. So just so you know, I'm just, you can attack him or, or are you going to mm. try to save Cork? Mm. Well, Cork isn't down though yet, is he? He's, well, he's, he's in death saves. He, he's, he's, a, he's got a death save. Oh, he's got one he? death save down. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, definitely I'm moving to him then. Okay. So where were you? I don't know if I could have. I think I was He right. was two back from where he was, like two down. No, no a little one bit up. more. No, I think there. you're right here. So 5, 10, 15, 20. You could actually run yeah, up yeah, to him. Right. Here's the thing. If you beeline there, you can get there, but you will provoke an attack of opportunity from this guy. But you will get there in time to have an action to do what you want to. Go for it. You got plenty of hit okay. points. Yeah. All right. So you run up here diagonally. This guy's going to take an attack of opportunity against you. He reaches out with his tomahawk. And... Mm. Man, did he actually land? 21. He hit you. Yep. Just barely. Oh, that's not his damage. That's his damage. All right. Um, okay. Take five, six damage. All right. All right. So you run. He, he hits you. You're so caught up in the moment with adrenaline, you don't even care. Um, you run up. You see the um, uh, poor cork is face down in the water. Um, what do you want to do? I'm going to, like, grab him and lift him up. And as I do, I'm going to lay on hands. How much? You've got 20 points. Um, let's do 10. 10. All right. So he's at 10. Okay. I'm going right. to just like, you know, stand so up. So you've still play. got your shield. So you run down, you grab him with one hand, you pick him up, you use the power of my leaky, this green energy. And, and, and he's, he seemed like breathe back in. <gasps> and as he does that, he still got this. He still got smoke coming out of his nostrils from his flame breath. And he kind of comes to, all right. Um, with that, um, Volo, um, he's going to run up here, not the boat, Volo. The boat runs up, he's under the boat. All right, um, he runs up, you, you, you pick Korik up. As you do that, Volo runs up, he grabs the little kobold, and he's going to try to take off with him. Um, with that, um, this guy will get an attack of opportunity on it. Got it. He will hit him. All right, he stabs him again. He's still up. He's, he's at six. <laughs> so he stabs him. And, and with that, uh, Volo then uh, tries to retreat with him, and he gets back to about here uh, carrying Korok. Uh, all right. 
Um, this guy here, he's entangled. The cat is entangled. He's going to try to get out of it. Um, oh, wait. He gets advantage now. This is strength. Yeah. All right. He breaks out, and he runs up, and he's going to try to make another hack at this guy with his claw. Uh, it will hit. He's going to slash him again for a massive six points of damage. Okay. And he just hacks again and again. So he's, he's, he's going on with that lizard guy. Um, that was come here, top of the round. Finn move my, uh, my, uh, hunter's mark to okay. the caster. Oh, to this guy back here. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I'm going to book it around to here. All right. Attack of opportunity for this little man. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, he's going to miss. Too fast for you. Too fast for you. All right, so you run, you jump over the other dead one, you slide around, you've got your spear. Um, so you've bonus action, move the hunter's mark, you've moved all the way up to the lizard folk, you, you get in flanking position, so now yep. you can um, attack with opportunity. I mean, attack with advantage, sorry. So roll 2d20. Yep, and it's just a regular two-handed spear. Mm -hmm. All the dice. All right, so the 17 is going to hit. So it's going to be three damage and then plus another D6 for the Hunter's Mark. Yep. Uh, so seven, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, so you run up, you stab him. Um, you As you pull out, he starts, you see blood coming out of his gut. He's still alive. Uh, we go to um, this guy here who's now fighting Mr. Finn. Um, he lets out this roar. Oh, crap. All right. Who? Who does this? Okay. So this guy right here who's fighting uh, the Glendon. The one that's fighting Glendon? Yeah. He lets out this, this, like, this gnarly roar, and he reaches down to the ground, and he makes this, this, this like, move to, like, to come up. With that, all of these, these giant, it's almost like this giant mouth comes out of the swamp itself to try to eat Glendon. Uh, Glendon, make a dexterity saving throw. Hmm. <laughs> Ooh. Okay, you're gonna you're getting eaten by this thing. Glendon, Good. you take Good God. Sixteen points of damage. It could have been a lot worse. That could have been terrible. Alright, as these giant um Alright. Um, you're also frightened at this point as this giant lizard mouth came out of absolutely nowhere and bit you and then disappeared. It just—it was just there, just clutched on you and disappeared. Um, you are frightened until the end of your next turn. Um, that, okay. that means you can't move forward. And... You can't move closer to him, but the big thing is you get a disadvantage on all of your ability checks. Mm. Okay. All right. Uh, also, point of order: make a um, concentrate uh, concentration check for fairy fire. Does fairy fire is concentration? Yes, it is. Okay, thought so. What is that? Oh, uh, where is that at? Concentration. You it's a con roll it, it, it's a it's a con save. save. Oh. It's gonna be a hard one. You gotta be to sixteen. It's half Just the damage. Up oh, it's the damage or ten. Yeah. Whatever. Whatever. It's ten. Is yeah. Lower. So just roll uh, a d twenty. Higher. Should be DC 10. He beat it. Alright, so Fairy Fire is still up. Alright, next we go to... McGrundon. McGrundon! Uh, I'm going to move over here. Get a little more in the heart of this stuff. Okay. And manifest my Echo again. Okay. Who disappeared at the end of my last turn. Okay. And he is going to... Boop. Nice. Appear right here, and he's going to come charging at the old caster. Okay. And take a swing. And when I attack, I will attack from the echo's position. Okay. You and have that advantage. Is a mighty... You have advantage on the attack because you're flanking. Ooh, advantage. Twenty. There you there go. We go. Roll your damage. D ten. Uh, that'll be seven damage. Um, it's a plus one weapon. That'll be eight damage. Plus. My strength is plus one. Okay. Um, have you used your bonus action? 
Yeah, the bonus action was to manifest it. Gotcha. Okay. All right. So you go, the the other self goes and manifests behind it. You go and out of, it wasn't expecting that attack at all. And you bring the glaive down uh, across its back. His back actually slices open and he just kind of falls over to the ground. So he is out. Okay. As soon as he goes down, um, I got to do something real quick. Oof. That's not good. All right. Um, Glendon, your turn. I've got movement left on him. I've got movement left on him. So since that one's dead, I'll go 5, 10, 15, 20. Look right here. (laughs) That's so Um, ridiculous. Frightened, so I can't move towards what caused me to be frightened. Correct. Okay. So that you can still attack, you just get disadvantage. Uh, Actually, you would get advantage. No, you can't get advantage off the echo. It's not a person, it's an item. Right. Okay. Um, so I'm trying to figure out who's who here. That one's still alive. Yeah. All right. Um, all right, I'll move over here. Okay. Attack of opportunity. I know. God, he's a 20. Nah, is 20 hit. hit. 20 does hit. Your AC is 20. Yeah, I think. Yeah, straight up 20. All right. Take five damage. I'm holding on. Okay. All right. Smack this guy. All the die. All right, so here's the thing that's interesting about this. Um, he has fairy fire on him, but you have disadvantage. So it's actually a straight roll. So the 24 is the roll. I thought he has disadvantage against the guy who frightened him, not against anything else. He's frightened. Oh, okay. All right, so the 20, anyway, the 24 hits. You do eight points of damage to him. Um, he had already been hit with a flame, so he's gone. All right, so you, uh, he, was, he wasn't seeing there. He was actually, you, as you got close to him, you saw this look of panic in his eye from seeing the uh, the other um, lizard man go down. In that moment of indecision, you caught him uh, with the axe across his, his stomach. He folds over the axe. As you rip it out, you just see all of his guts come out the side of it as he flops over. Um, from there, we go to Volo, who continues to carry um, Korik back to the boat. So they're back in the boat. Um, For my bonus, I'm gonna uh, do that hidden step. Oh, vanish. Yeah. Okay. All right, you vanish. All right. So yeah. top of the round, we're gonna. Oh, Carmer, this guy here is gonna run. Um, with him being down, he's gonna run to here, and he's going to attack twice with both claws. Uh, does he have advantage? Six. Actually, he does. So that's the first attack. The 13 will hit, and then the second attack um, will hit. So both of these attacks will hit. He will do four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, 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 nine. That's enough to get him. All right, he's down. All right, so he reaches over. He jumps up with both of his claws and just rakes it down his back. He basically like just drives the uh, the lizard folk all the way down to the ground. Um, with that, um, we go to the top of the round. Finn. Bonus move the uh, hunter's, mark. hunter's mark. Okay. I'm going to. I'm going to. Actually, I'm going to vault over the, the dragon and try to come down with the spear. Okay. All right. I'm trying to shish kebab him. Go for it. Um, attack. It, it's not with like, advantage though. It's just a straight attack. That's a twelve. Um, all right, you as you go, he he like he saw it coming. He spins around and lowers the shield and knocks your spear out of the way. Um, it's okay. his turn. Um, I got to roll to see if I recharge. I do not. Okay. He uh, he looks at you. He starts whispering something you don't quite understand. Make a wisdom saving throw. 
<laughs> Monks don't fall for anything. All right. Um, yeah, you 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 shake it off. Um, with that, um, he is going to take off. Yeah. No. Ah. No, uh. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty. He's gonna he's gonna run, but you get an attack of opportunity. With hunter's mark. Right. Um. And so and so does the uh, so does my echo. You're right. It does. Y'all both do. Ugh. Uh, you missed. Echo makes this attack. Uh, uh, Eleven. Uh, no, no. Both times he he blocks both of you off with the shield. Oh, 12. Cool. All right, he he's he's running oh, yeah. for it. He's taking off. All right. So now we go to McGrundon's turn. Hey, this bitch ain't getting away from oh, me. Oh, uh, let's see. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five. I send my echo. Okay. Uh, towards it. All right. And uh, yeah, I'll bonus action and trade places with it. Okay, attack. And I'll 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 take my attack. That yellow dice needs to be in no, dice no, no. jail. Okay. All right. Yes, um, it does. He did not have fairy fire on him. No, he didn't. Okay. All right. So you you're right up on him. He tries to attack. Uh, you miss him. It goes to um, Coric, um, who is up at this point. He runs up. He sees what's happening through the trees, and he is going to try to help. He um, he calls out. You hear this in Draconic, and he tells him, No! Run back towards the ocean! It's safer there! <laughs> and he, you see him like stop for a second and shake, and he, he, he decides to not take Korik's suggestion. Um, with that, we go to this guy's dead, that guy's dead, Glendon. I can get adjacent like that. That's enough. Can I swing? Okay. Yep. Yeah, I'm going to swing. Okay. All right. 